everything is interactive. It's, it's not like, you know, we just have these T cells and B cells coming from the lymphocytes and the thymus and the spleen. It's that everything together. Now, they separate it as, you know, innate and adaptive. And we kind of talk about it from the perspective of a whole person. And I think that makes such a big difference in helping people understand that their immune system is not these individual cells. It's, it's our overall body protection. It's how we relate to what's going on. And that can be affected by um, certainly our kidney function. Our lifestyle plays a significant role. And we look at our, our, our yin qi, our nutritive qi. How are we doing in terms of what we put in our bodies and our lifestyle? And then there's the, the shen and the kidney about how we're resting and how we take care of ourselves in a lot of different ways. We're going to talk about integrating herbs and acupuncture into your treatment of autoimmune disease. And I think that it's important that we review, at least briefly, I don't want to go in and belabor all of this, but we're going to talk about Western and Chinese concepts of immunity. I'm going to review some of the style that I do. I'm a Japanese practitioner. My mentor and teacher for the last 25 years has been Dr. Miki Shima. And now that he's retired, he's encouraged me to teach some of the Japanese uh, approach to how Chinese medicine is practiced in Japan. So I'm going to review a little bit about the eight extras, and we're going to talk about um, the channel divergence. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what seems to be some of the reasons that people develop autoimmune problems. But this uh, also will then go into the acupuncture and herbs for, to start off with, um, organ-related autoimmunity. We're going to talk about thyroid diseases, we're going to talk about ulcerative colitis, and we're going to talk about um, multiple sclerosis from the organ perspective of what's going on. The, the problem is, is you can have positive testing, but no symptoms, or you can have clinical symptoms, uh, but no labs that are positive. Now, it's important to recognize this because I see a large number of people that come that have abnormal um, tests. They come in with positive um, laboratory autoimmune testing, and it might not be extremely high, but what it says is the immune system is overreacting in some way but it doesn't mean they have a disease. And it also means, and we'll talk about it, that if you intervene in certain issues that come up or that they have, you can change that autoimmunity by regulating the immune system, which I think can be done with herbs and acupuncture. Things change if you impact someone or they have something develop in their lives that stressors them or affects them in an adverse way things shift. And I think it's really important that each time you see someone, which is how we get back to the idea that when doctors see people with these diseases, it's all they're focused on is, you know, is how's the thyroid numbers? How's your diarrhea? You know, are you weaker? They don't look at an overall aspect. So try to remember that even though you have a diagnosis, you have a patient.